Hey, what's up, guys? This is another installation of Mike One's Pro Tools for Beginners. Um, this is a little bit intermediate, but it can be uh, labeled as beginners also for this particular session. Last time we talked about the setup and going into your I.O. and naming your buses different things, and I specifically brought attention to my monitors and my mixed down buses. Why I do that. Um, I'll be explaining that today and also I'm going to be explaining the use of an auxiliary channel what is an auxiliary channel and why do we use it okay so first let's go into auxiliary channels um, I've had a friend who was very new into audio engineering and he came to me and he's called me up he goes Micah Pro Tools sucks man I put 10 reverbs on the thing and it crashes and I go well are you running Pro Tools LE or uh, or uh, HD? And he goes, LE. And I go, yeah, that should be fine, but why are you running 10 reverbs? He goes, what do you mean? He goes, I have 10 tracks I want to put reverb on. And I go, well, there's other ways to do that. Um, basically, this is a common mistake, and uh, one that I've made myself uh, when I first started out, was uh, if you want to send multiple things to a reverb or an effect, you don't have to instantiate the reverb over and over and over. And what I mean by that is, if you look on your inserts channel, you don't have to put a reverb, say for instance, here, and put another reverb here, and put another reverb here, or delay, and here. What you can do is create an AUGS channel with, uh, with Pro Tools. Uh, the shortcut again, Control shift n brings up the new track dialog. Go ahead and uh, go to AUGS, change that and um, you can go ahead and add as many AUGS channels as you want. Now what an AUGS channel does is it think of it as a conduit or a path for audio to take. Um, you can go ahead and let's let's actually create one mono AUGS and it should put it right here. Okay. Now what that does is an AUGS channel uh, opens the doors for you to send it copies of audio. So for this particular lead synth, let's have a listen to this. As you can tell, there's a lot of reverb and delay on that. What I've done is I've sent them a copy of this particular audio here by sending it to a reverb here, a reverb here, and a delay here. So I'm sending copies to this to these AUGS channels at the bottom of my session. And I've labeled the inputs as mono verb here, mono verb right, and stereo delay here. So what that's doing is it's sending a copy at different levels, levels that you specify, processing it, and then sending it back to the main outs. Okay? And why you would want to do that is that saves you a lot of DSP or digital signal processing um, for your computer to, uh, it's, it's like resources basically, resource management. Instead of having all of these tracks and putting a reverb here, 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 I can set up one or two reverbs and then just send them copies via the busing. Um, kind of a, a hard concept to understand at first but once you label which is why I spend a lot of time on this once you label your buses it gets a lot easier you can see if I hadn't labeled any of my buses this would be very confusing I didn't know because it's just a number 18 19 it doesn't mean anything so make sure you label your buses and send them appropriately okay so enough about that the AUGS channel again and the AUGS channel also takes uh, it takes uh, plugins too, so you can you can instantiate plugins on the AUGS channel. So again, I put my reverb on the AUGS channel itself right here. Got this nice little reverb TL space, great plugin, um, and I'm sending it out to my monitors. Which brings me to my next topic: monitors and mix down channels. So in the beginning of my session, every the first thing that I do is I create a new. Um, new tracks, I create two stereo tracks, one audio and one AUGS. I'm not going to create them now because I've already created them. So I go ahead and I'm going to cancel this and this is what I'm talking about. My monitors right here is going to be my stereo AUGS channel 
and this is going to be my mix down is going to be a stereo audio channel now if you hit control equals the shortcut to bring up the mix window what you can see what I've done is every channel instead of going out to the default which is out one and two it's going somewhere usually to monitors if it's not going to monitors it's going to a bus and that bus is going to monitors so every channel my audio and my augs is going to a ch uh, augs channel named monitors which I have right here and I've appropriately set the input as you guessed it monitors so essentially all of these tracks will be going to this one channel so anything that I put on the inserts here whether it's an analyzer to look at my my frequency response and to see what's going on in my mix um, anything that's gonna go on here will be treated by these plugins also well now what I do is actually let's have a quick listen to this mix so you can see what's going on Ooh, distortion okay so as you can see I'm it's pushing really high but um, all of the plugins are being sent here now let's say if I want to record this mix why I have it separate is for this very reason I can take this output now and change it to my mix down output so what it's doing now is once it hits this I can go here to this mix this mix down window and appropriately this mix down windows input is called mix down okay now when I hit record I can just simply playlist this by hitting this little arrow new hitting OK for a new mix say mix two and let's say I want I made some changes to my mix and I want to make a new alternative mix so I could just hit record and in real time Pro Tools will bounce down the track of my choice uh, and at the same time keeping all of the the mixes here in the library that I can bring back at any point if for comparison or whatnot and it just keeps things nice and organized this is one of the main reasons I do not bounce the disk because it keeps everything within the session file itself also a really cool factor here is that if you want you could even do your, your own manual gain writing right here and let's say I want to do a quick fade out look it records it in real time look at that okay so you can see that there's a lot of cool things that you can do with a setup like this this actually controls my monitors which is why I called it monitors because it controls the amount of output that I hear so as you can see I did a manual gain ride here and did a nice little fade out with this little trick of recording to an audio track now if I want to take this audio track I can click it and right click it and rename it anything that I want but if I want to export it what I could do is double click it come here and click this double arrow here and it, it brings out this regions menu if you click here you can export it as a file choose your folder here I like to leave it as wave I like to keep 24 bit until I master um, uh, I leave my sample rate as is and I like to choose some folder now what you do is when you export this it'll export this entire wave as is done deal get it mastered and you're ready to go um, no monkey business there everything's nice and neat nice and clean and a great little tip for Pro Tools okay so I hope that helps I uh, hope you guys learned something and um, let me know if there's any questions alright thanks that wasn't a fart that was my chair see I'm doing it again. See? Look. Okay. See you guys. <laughs>